Should we just gather up the white supremacists and do street justice? That would be ideal. <laughs> uh, again, I'm not going to say anything that would directly incriminate me, but I would say that would be a good idea. I don't want to say we need to go start killing all white folks, but it's like, but <laughs> maybe they need to feel the pain and the hurt. Feel the same pain that we feel in. Feel the hurt that you were putting out. Get that back and see how it feels. So maybe they do need to feel the pain that, that we've been feeling for years. Peace and love. Same to you. Peace I mean, were you shocked by the responses you got when you went around asking people about race and about whites? I was shocked. I was angered. But the emotion that that washed over me the most was was profound sadness. Um, by the way, the one clip where the woman said, um, you know, round up the white supremacists and do street justice. The clip before that was her defining white supremacy. It wasn't guys with uh, with with white hats on. Uh, it was basically anybody. Uh, who's a Republican who voted for Trump, uh, who doesn't believe in, in race as the most uh, important um, uh, uh, thing that we, that we view the world through. So basically, most of this country, she said, uh, was white supremacist. Yeah, look, um, I can go on and on. In that video, they're talking about the, the genocide that is happening to them uh, in America, the genocide. And I, when I clarified what genocide means, right, the eradication of an entire race of people, they looked at me and they go, yeah. That's exactly what we're talking about here. What are we talking about? We're talking about all of this comes down to data. I'm a data person. I'm not, I try not to be overly mm. emotional. I try to not to look th at things through anecdote. I look at things through data. And what we have, the, what does the data tell us? That in 2020, 18 unarmed black people were killed by the police officers, 18. Of those 18, the vast majority of them were either the, the perpetrator was attacking the police officer, trying to get, grab his gun, trying to choke him, or an honest, terrible mistake. The vast majority. There's a small handful of things one could look at and say, this was a bad shoot. This was terrible, okay? So this is what we're talking about, a small handful. Everyone is a tragedy. I don't want to, to, to make light sure. of yeah. any death. But to overturn our system of government, which is what they're trying to do, make no mistake about it, that when they say systemic racism, what they mean to say is the entire system has to be overturned. They mean the judicial system completely, our form of government completely. You use the word, when I was listening to you guys, neo-Marxism, you use that word a lot. And that's what we're talking about. This is a form of neo-Marxism, but instead of looking through it through class, they look at it through the prism of race. Right, that's what we're talking about here. And I want to make something else clear, that, that people are trying to separate the protesters from the looters and the rioters. Fair enough. But they are absolutely two sides of the same coin. What do I mean by that? All the people you heard in that video were protesters, people who said they did not get involved in any of the rioting or the looting or the arson. But I have spent, I probably have spent more times from somebody on our side with the protesters than anyone else in this country or the world. I probably, I've interviewed probably five or 600 people on camera, off camera. And one of the same questions I ask each one of them is, do you justify the violence? Do you accept the violence. And of the five, 600 people I spoke to, I can think of two who said, no, it's unjustifiable. Wow. The vast, vast majority of every single protester who went to a BLM uh, uh, rally, ask your friends and family, their kids, and they will justify the violence. They won't engage in it, but they'll justify it. And it's that justification which gives the air to these violent people, the people who are destroying and upending our cities, they are supported by these people. And, and I want to make that point abundantly clear. That's that, why that, we are in the situation army, we are in today. That army is exactly what happened in the brown shirts in Hitler's Germany, precisely that. Uh, the people accepted that the violence was uh, somehow acceptable. And that is the problem we're looking at. James. I want to ask what you thought about how Joe Biden uh, talked, first of all, in the run-up to the verdict in the... Um, George Floyd trial, and then also what he said afterwards, where he seemed to, you know, first on the one hand say that there was only one proper jury, jur jury verdict for the jury to come back with, uh, which is fine, but except he's the president, and number two, then went and endorsed essentially systemic racism and critical race theory. What did you make of Joe Biden's behavior in all of this? 
It's the same behavior that I've seen throughout his presidency. Look, when he became president, he, Joe Biden has always, for the most part, been a moderate, a left of center moderate. And I don't have a particular issue with that. I mean, it's not my cup of tea, but fair enough. If that's who he elected, that's who he elected. He has, he has in, in, in both word and deed, been radical in his in his presidency. And when it comes to race, that has been no different. He has been, to, 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 if I'm to underplay it, uh, he has been awful. Um, and he's been damaging. And he's been hurtful to our race relations. Like I said, you know, the last time we spoke, he, he used the words, like, you know, he denude, what the left does is they take words and they denude the power from those words. So when he says uh, uh, voting rights, uh, the, the, the voter ID laws are Jim Crow on steroids, that is despicable. It is disgusting. and does nothing but add fuel to the fire we have seen. And for him to predetermine the, the outcome of this race. And by the way, not just him, other Democrats have said the same things. And, and by the way, uh, my guess is, is that when Derek Chauvin comes up for appeal, and believe you me, he will, they will be using this for a mistrial. And by the way, the judge himself said there may be some grounds for this, okay? When you have a Democratic congresswoman, Maxine Waters, a race baiter par excellence for years, come to Minneapolis and first of all, try to, to, to get people to commit more violence and then try to predetermine uh, uh, um, the, the, uh, the outcome and saying if you don't get the outcome, there will be more violence. This is this this is problematic to say the least. And yeah, so, I, it is. So, so Ami, can I, I just I'm ask? Let down. Can I just ask you on that? Do you think the jury, one juror, has said he didn't want to see the city burn? Your video showed people saying, "Oh, well, the city's going to burn if he gets off. If the, if, if the verdict ain't guilty." Uh, do you think? How do you think the jury? Do you think they played it fairly, or do you think that there was one eye on the city potentially burning? Oh my God! Of course they did. <laughs> yes, of, that's, of course they did. Because by the way, on, on, I, it was shocking to me. And by the way, if I'm coming hot, I apologize, guy. But I'm really worked up about this. Um, the, the the judge did not sequester the jury until they were deliberating, right? So the jury is, and what sequestering means essentially, you take what you try to do is try to shield juries from media coverage around uh, a, a particular event. And they didn't do that. They were watching all of this stuff, okay? So they're watching it and they're seeing people's perception on how it's going, not how it actually was going. And yes, th look, um, I I'm not going to argue whether their justice was done, not done. This is a jury of our peers and they found him guilty. But um, if you ask me, and I, and I watched many, many hours of this, was he guilty, in my opinion, of manslaughter? Absolutely. Third-degree murder, by the way, and I don't want to get too much in the weeds. Stop me if I am. Third-degree murder doesn't even apply. Never mind, was he guilty of it? It doesn't apply. In fact, it was at first taken off the table, but this judge put it back on. And they get, found him guilty of something which didn't even occur, not even remotely. It's not about what, it's not in the regs, right? So, yeah, this whole thing was, was, was a charade, frankly, I thought, and, 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 and we've had absolutely no proper judicial process when wow. it came, came to, uh, to the Chauvin trier. Rita? Well, I just want to ask you about the media's role in this insanity. There was a piece published in Newsweek this week saying that 70% of white people and 95% of black people who think white Republican voters are racist believe that there's more black men killed by police than in car accidents. I mean, that is just so insanely wrong that it's frightening that such a large percentage of people would hold that belief. Is that the media's fault? Is it the school's fault? Is it the politicians? Where does that ignorance come from? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Fantastic. I yes, think you've answered yes. it, Army. We're going to leave it there. Well done. You always get straight to the point and cut straight to the chase.